This is Jerry Beck, and we're going to watch Eaten on the Cuff. And I really like this cartoon. This is one of my favorite Bob Clampett cartoons. I don't think it gets enough credit, mainly, I think, because it's a black and white film. And it feels like one of his great color films. It's done by the same people. This is an actor named Leo White. Leo White is an English comedian who came to America in the teens and worked with Charlie Chaplin and in many silent films. And you can see him in scores of movies for Warner Brothers and others on TCM. And he appeared in a lot of short subjects. And look at the curtain behind them there. They were obviously on one of those big stages at Warner Brothers, you know, where they do the Busby Berkeley musicals. And you'll see a little more of that at the end of the film. Clampett liked to use live action around this time. He made, I think, a year before this, Porky's Pooch, which had all live action backgrounds, which is an unusual thing. I think Clampett was just experimenting. And maybe it was cheaper to do it in black and white. Veronica Lake, and you get Adolf Hitler in this cartoon. A lot of topical references. Here comes the groom, straight as a broom. As I was saying, this cartoon is a lot like his later color cartoons. It should be. It's pretty much his last black and white cartoon. It came shoehorned between Bugs Bunny Gets the Boyd and the Hep Cat. I mean, it's got all the same animators of those classics. It's as good as any of those cartoons. It just isn't seen as much because of it being black and white. Mm, nice piece of material. And pre-war cuffs, too. Eaten on the cuff. On the cuff is a barroom expression from the turn of the century, the last century, which means on credit. So eating on credit is sort of what the cartoon means. on the clock. There's Clampett loved to spoof Disney films, as we all know. Corny Concerto is sort of a parody of Fantasia. Cole Black and the Seven Dwarves is a spoof of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And this is a takeoff on the Moth and the Flame, which Disney did a few years earlier. So our little pal, the Moth, who was fed up with a cloth, decided he was late and how he ran. Ah, but a big black widow spider dropped beside him with a bang! Now, this widow spider, Zara Burner, did her voice. In this film, she's imitating the radio character Kobina, which was a regular character on the Bob Hope show. Brenda and Kobina, two man hungry dames, in regular weekly skits on that show. Kobina was the one who would usually yell, Look, a man! And that's what she's doing here a lot. Oh, that's a uh, Veronica Lake pose that she's doing there, except that her big schnoz gets in the way, any typical Clampett touch. <laughs> Sarah Burner was pretty much the female voice in Warner Brothers cartoons in the 1940s. She was the Mama Buzzard in Clampett's Beaky Buzzard cartoons, and she's also Maisie Bird in uh, Horton Hatches the Egg. And she was a regular on Jack Benny, like Mel Blanc was. If you want to see her on screen, she actually appears in Hitchcock's Rear Window. But the moth could not be had, and it made the widow mad just to think there was a man she couldn't tame. Of course, Mel Blanc is the voice of the moth and is also the voice of Leo White in this film. He's the voice of the narrator. Leo is lip syncing to Mel Blanc's voice, obviously.
musician Dave Claxkin, who was a Warner Brothers studio pianist, is actually playing the actual music you hear in this film as well. And composer Mickey Ford wrote the cartoon's special song, the Moth and the Flame song. That's an original for this film. Ford is a composer who did a few B-films at Republic. I don't know much more about him than that. Confidentially, she stings. My hero. Ugh, shucks. Twerk, nothing. So they built a little nest, and they settled in the vest, and lived happy ever after. This cartoon really moves. Uh, Clampett really excelled at setting his cartoons to music, and this is a great example of that. I never could understand what that cute little bee could see in that silly moth. Gene Hazelton designed the characters in this cartoon right after designing the characters in Cole Black, so they have a great look. <laughs> 